Question 5. Copper is a transition element. It forms a wide variety of compounds. Part A. Define transition elements. Okay. Uh, transition elements is the D block element that form one or more stable ions with incomplete D orbitals. Uh, it's uh, easier and better uh, to okay for me to use the iron as example, uh, so you can understand better. So if uh, now the iron undergo oxidation means uh, release electron. When the iron release two electrons from 4s, okay, so it will form this 3d6 configuration. And this is one um, ions of the iron. And this, uh, this iron also can release three electrons means two electrons from 4s, another electrons from the 3D to form this 3D5 configuration. And this one is, this argon 3D5 configuration is for the iron 3. So therefore, we can say that the iron is a transition element because it's a deep block element and it can form this and these two stable ion. And these two stable ions, they have incomplete D orbitals or incomplete uh, D subshells. Okay, so this is the, the definitions. Means uh, as long the D orbital is incomplete, then eventually uh, it will form some color. Right, so Fe2 is, the, is uh, pale green and the Fe3 is yellow. Part B, an aqueous solution of copper 2 sulfate uh, is contains the hexa aqua copper 2 complex ion. Uh, if an excess uh, concentrated HCl is added to this solution, ligand exchange happen and it will form this tetrachloral copper, uh, uh, this uh, copper 2 complex ion. Okay, part 1, complete. Table 5.1 to state the geometry, coordination number of copper, and of course the bond angle for these two uh, complex ion. Um, first, you need to know uh, how it looks like when it has the certain numbers of uh, this uh, coordination number. For this uh, hexa aqua copper 2 ion, so we know that uh, it will form uh, six stative bonds like this means uh, six water molecules will form six dative bonds with the copper and therefore it has six coordination number. When it's formed this six coordination number, we know that the geometry is octahedral. Okay, so this one therefore, another one is you need to fill in is a bond angle. When it's octahedral, all the bond angle is 90 degree, 90 degree. Okay, so for this uh, second, uh, this uh, tetrachloral copper so we know that uh, is the uh, tetrahedral means its uh, coordination number is 4 and this one will form tetrahedral geometry so copper with uh, 4 chloride okay, it will form this complex ion which is tetrahedral you just remember that and tetrahedral, everyone should know now, is uh, 109.5 degree. Okay, so part two. In an isolated copper 2 ion, the d orbitals are all degenerate, like this one, same energy level. In a complex ion such as the hexa aqua copper 2, uh, the d orbitals are non degenerate which is this one. Define degenerate and non-degenerate in this context. Okay, very easy. Degenerate means, uh, for example, these five uh, D orbitals now, uh, they are at the same energy level. Uh, so we call this one as non-degenerate orbital. 
right? So this is the non-degenerate means. Sorry, this is a degenerate means. Non-degenerate is different energy level, which is this one and this one. So the d orbitals now they are not really at the same energy level. We call non-degenerate. Right. Uh, this is the definition that you must know. Part three: Explain why solutions of the two complex ions in the table five point one they are different color. So uh, this one is the pale blue color. This one is the yellow color. So why they have different color? Uh, the color formation uh, is actually because of the, the, the wavelength that being absorbed. So how? Um, let's use this diagram. Uh, when the, the light pass through the sample, means the wavelength, uh, some wavelength will be absorbed. Let's say uh, the electrons at lower energy level, so it will absorb certain wavelength and undergo excitation. So therefore, we know that some of the wavelength in the light will absorb by the this uh, complex ion, and eventually we will see the complementary color. Means the the colors that form actually is uh, depends on the delta E here. This one. If the delta E here change then the wavelength that absorb it will change and we will see different complementary color. Uh, so that's why they have different color because they have different delta E. Uh, so this is what you need to mention. They have different delta E and therefore they will absorb different wavelength and we will, we will see different complementary color. Part C. Copper 2 form complex ion containing water molecules and eating dioic ions uh, common name we call oxalate ion and this is the bidentic ligand and the formula of this of the complex form is this one the copper with the two bidentic ligand and the two h2o part one explain what is mean by bidentic uh, so this is very easy Bidentic means the species that are able to donate two lone pair and form two dative bonds with the metal cation. So must donate two lone pair and form two dative bonds. Uh, we use this one as example. Uh, why is a bidentic? Because the ox uh, oxygen here, they have a lone pair, two oxygens here. And this two lone pair, it can uh, donate to the metal cation and form dative bonds. Part two, there are three stereoisomers. Stereoisomer means cis, trans, and optical. So three stereoisomers with the formula okay, that we mentioned just now. So copper with two uh, these uh, ethane direct ions and uh, H2O. Complete the 3D um, diagram to show these three stereoisomers. Uh, first, you need to understand uh, when the complex ion is has uh, uh, two bidentic ligand and one and two monodentic ligand. This one, so it will form cis trans, and the cis isomer will form opticals later. So means what you need to draw the three isomer is, you draw cis and trans. After that, you draw the from the cis you draw another optical okay so how to do for this one uh, first you need to draw the cis isomer make sure the h2o the monodentic they are at the same side means uh, it's 90 degree between them the bond angle is 90 degree and uh, you draw this cis isomer just follow my drawing, the 3D drawing. And the charge, of course, is too negative, right? So because copper is too positive, it's too negative, too negative. So this one is too negative. Okay, so after that, you draw another one, uh, the trans isomer. 
uh, make sure the H2O ligand, they are now, uh, the bond angle is 180, means they are opposite, not the same side. So this is trans isomer. Uh, so you draw the cis and the trans first, like this. And imagine there is a, 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 a mirror here, right? So you try to draw the mirror image of the cis isomer means something like this. Make sure it's follow the, the orientation, right? So the H2O must be this position and the bidentate also need to be this position, right? So just follow what I, what I did. Okay, so this one is the optical isomer, means uh, these two uh, uh, isomers, they are non super impossible. So they are optical isomer. So you just draw these three uh, that, that's the stereo isomer means. Part 3. Use your answer in the part 2 to answer this question. Uh, stereo isomer 1, 2, 3 show two uh, different type of uh, isomerism. I told you already just now. It's cis, trans, and optical. Name the two types of isomerism. For each type, identify the pair of stereo isomer. Very easy. Optical is 1, 2. Here, this one. 1, 2, they are opticals. 1, 3, the acid trans, right? So you just fill in like that, right? Question D. A solution contains 3.7 gram of the salt uh, uh, that we discussed just now, the complex ion, uh, dissolved in 100 cm cube of solution. 25 cm cube of the sample of this solution is uh, oxidized by 0 0.01 mole per dm cube acidified cheminol 4. Uh, this is how it looks like. Of course, it's not really uh, the titration. It's just uh, to, to let you know uh, how it should be, means what is the reaction is about. Uh, 25 uh, cm cube of the salt solutions that, uh, that prepare now, tie, uh, reacts with the chemino 4 with 0 0.01 mole per dm cube. In this question, is asked what is the minimum volumes that need to use? Minimum volumes of chemino 4. So you need to calculate accordingly. Uh, the most important information that uh, you need to use is the, this equation. Uh, the mole ratio between the uh, ethane direct ion and the permanganate is 2 to 5. Uh, sorry, 5 to 2. So we use this ratio for calculations later. And again, uh, the question is calculate the minimum volume of 0 0.01 mole per dm cube as D5 chemino 4 needed to oxidize all these uh, ethane direct ions in 25 cm cube sample. Okay, first thing that you need to do is you need to calculate the concentration of the salt that prepared. So use uh, because here is given, so you just need to use the gram 3.7 over the molar mass that given, and uh, you get moles. And this mole need to uh, divide by the volume because it's 100 cm cube here, so it's 0 0.1 dm cube. You get the concentration of the salt solutions that prepare, okay, which is 0 0.1151 mole per dm cube. Okay, after that, use uh, this. Uh, concentration to get or to uh, calculate the most of the ethane direct ion. So the most of this uh, ethane direct ion in 25 cm cube, so you just need to <coughs> use the, the concentration okay, times 25 over 1000, this is a mole, uh, most of the salt, then we know that one mole of this salt is will form two moles of the ion. If you see the formulas carefully, one mole of this salt it will form two moles of these ions. Okay, therefore, you calculate the moles of the the salt that you use then times two. So you get this mole, the moles of the these uh, ions. Okay, after that, because we know that. Is a reaction between the ethane diode ion, this one, 
and the caminal fold. So from this mole in 25 cm cube of the sample solution, we will know the moles of permanganate ion. So the moles of permanganate ion is smaller, right? Because it's 5 to 2, as you can see, 5 to 2. So therefore, the moles of permanganate ion is the moles of the ethane dioate ion times 2 over 5. It's a smaller ratio. So you just use 2 over 5. So you get the moles of permanganate ion. So still not yet finished because this is mole. The question asks minimum volume. So use this mole uh, again, use n equal to mv over 1000. So mole we already get. What we need to use is or to get is v. Concentration also uh, uh, given. So you just need to use the mole times 1000. Okay, bring this one to there, times 1000. Over the concentration, 0 0.01, you get 230 cm cube. So the minimum volume needed is 230 cm cube. Of course, it's not going to be this titration. The burette, let's say it's 50 cm cube, is not enough. Okay, this is just to illustrate uh, how to how the reactions uh, happen. Okay, part E. Copper 2 nitrate and barium nitrate both decompose when heated. Copper 2 nitrate decompose at lower temperature than barium. Give a reason for this difference and uh, explain your answer. Very easy. Uh, so first, you need to use the ionic radius. The copper Copper 2 ions is smaller and the barium 2 ions is ionic radius is larger. So we know that the charge density of the copper 2 ion is greater. Why? Because volume is smaller, same charge. So the charge density is greater. When this copper 2 is has a greater charge density, it has more polarizing power means it's able to distort the nitrate better. When the nitrate ions get distorted, the NO bond inside there will break easily and it will form the copper oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Easier. So means it will decompose at lower temperature. Uh, that, that's the, the, the one you, you should know, right? So therefore, this is answer. Copper 2 ion has the uh, smaller uh, ionic radius than barium. Okay, therefore, copper 2 ion has greater polarizing power, which can distort the N ion, means the nitrate, more, more than barium. Then it's easy to break the bonds, the NO bonds. Okay, that's all. Thank you.